Welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. This one is going to be a remake of one of my first tutorials ever made for a chapel. This is of course an updated version of it and it is more historically accurate. It is based on a medieval church from the late medieval period from Central Europe. Now this is of course a design which kind of tries to get the best of both worlds to be historically accurate and still look good in Minecraft, as it is always the case if you want to translate something from real life into Minecraft, it is hard without it looking too plain in Minecraft or without it losing the historically accuracy. So I try to get the best of both worlds here, and if that means it is a little bit historically inaccurate, then I will have to live with it. It's, it's kind of like, it's, it's you know the saying, my grandma used to say it all the time. Um, it's it's more better to have two hands in the bird than it is to beat around the bush or something like that. <sighs> My grandma was a smart woman. Anyway, let's deconstruct the layout of the church before actually building it. We're gonna start with the main hall, which is called the nave or the aisle. This is where all the preaching is happening. You have an altar, you have benches to sit on. That's basically it. Especially in the early Middle Ages, most churches were actually just naves, so they were simply houses. You couldn't necessarily tell as an outsider if this was actually a church or not. Sometimes you had a little cross on the roof or at the entrance, but aside from that, it was very hard to tell if it actually was a church or not. Now let's add something to it. So first of all, I want to add a tower. Obviously, I love towers, so let's add one. Now if we don't implement the tower into the nave, then we most likely use it as an entrance. In this case, oftentimes it was placed to the west side of the nave. That's why it's called a west tower. It was placed on the west side because on the east side of the nave there was the altar. The altar was placed on the east side because that is the side that Jerusalem lies in, at least from a European's perspective. So as you can see, east side and west side was invented way before the US existed, and in this case, the medieval people of Europe were the original hipsters. Now let's add something else to it. Let's add an abscess. The abscess is a semicircular area added to the east side of the nave, where you basically have an altar or the priest can stand there and preach to his disciples. Another thing that you could add is a choir, which is basically kind of an abscess, but in a rectangular shape, and most of the time, a choir would be accompanied by another abscess at the end. The choir was called the choir because, guess what? The choir stood there and performed. Now in our case, as you can see, we only have an abscess, but I want to add something else to it. A parsonage. Not every church necessarily needs a parsonage, but oftentimes you had one. A parsonage is a humble home for the priest to live in. It was very small and very humble, and if there wasn't a parsonage, then there is a very good chance of finding a small shack or a small house in the vicinity of the church where the priest could live. And with that, we have all the elements I want to use in this tutorial, so let's get building. So, what do you think will we build first? This is a pop quiz. A. The tower. B. The frames. C. The frames for the tower. Or D. All of the above. You guessed it, it's all of the above. Yay! So, this is the entrance. This is the door. This I, I know this is... Don't, don't be as smart as. This is a grass block, I know. But this is the grass block that the door is going to pl be placed on later on. So... Come on, David. So, I'm gonna place those four logs like this. So, this is the door block later on, David. These are two logs, leave one block free, another log. Then, one block free, another log, one block free, another log, one block free, another log. And repeat the same thing on this side as well. So we have this kind of U shape. On this side, we're not gonna do anything. Don't don't even dare to place a block there. Not Not even one block. None at all. So, we're gonna make these six blocks high. So, these are four blocks. There we go, there we go, there we go. And then two more. There we go. Now, on top of here, we're gonna, we're gonna make cross beams all the way around and even on this side now you can build something here isn't that great and down here you wanna have one block free and then place another sideway log here so this is on the fourth block from the bottom and then 
two more like this, one here, one there, one there, one there, and none here. Don't don't place a block here. All right. Once again, not gonna do anything here. Then we're gonna go up. We're gonna go up seven blocks. So four, five, six, seven. Seven blocks. And of course, this is, as you can see, a double pillow. So, same thing here. Funny story. I I recorded this. This this is the the fifth try of me recording this, and the first times I was wondering why it was lagging so much and the reason was because the render distance was way too far for the shaders to actually be able to uh, get me a good frame rate so I found that out after about uh, two hours of recording now nah, well it was one and a half hours of recording either way this time it's much more smoother so as you can see at the seventh block I'm gonna add an overhanging block to the outside again so that we are end up at the same block as the first pillar was placed Going out from that, I'm gonna add three more logs, then sideway logs to all four sides and two more logs like this. So three more logs, four more, whoops, four sideway logs like this and two more logs, same thing here. Now the reason why, as you can see down here at the bottom, I'm gonna use a different wall material for the tower than I'm using for the um, for the nave is that towers, were, th these, these kind of west towers were mostly added significantly later. So the, the nave was mostly built first. Most of the time it was just a regular house that people just gathered in and uh, the priest was partially living in it. And later on a tower was added to it and therefore sometimes the tower was built so significantly later so that it was even in another um, architecture style. So um, in the in the in the example of my uh, real life inspiration church, the nave was Romanesque and the tower was Gothic. So yeah, this is why I'm gonna use um, a different kind of material and of course also because high towers can't be built out of stone and um, or for for a long time half timber framed structures weren't able to use stone in the upper on the upper floors because it was just too heavy and therefore it was mostly uh, clay that was used for this so for the half timber construction down here I want to add two logs and two sideway logs like this then leave one block free and place three sideway logs with one log on the bottom and one hanging over and three locks here and two locks diagonally connecting to those sideway locks we placed earlier. Same thing here, two locks, two sideway, three sideway, one at the bottom, one overhanging, three locks, and two connecting diagonally to those. Same thing on this side again. Dum -ba -dum, dum -ba -dum, dum -ba -dum. One, two, three and diagonally. Last thing here, with the only exceptions being I'm not gonna place two logs here. I'm gonna start with those two sideway logs and those three sideway logs and this one log. Three logs and those diagonal logs. And the reason for that is because I wanna add a door later on exactly here. So therefore I can't place those here and I'm not gonna place an overhanging log to the outside here. Now for the roof, I want to add another cross beam over here and over here. And then you want to go in one block diagonally to the inside and two blocks high. Repeat that so that once again you have this kind of shape. And repeat that to all sides and not mess up. I said not mess up. There we go. And that is the roof, at least the frames for the roof. Isn't that a nice tower? Now we need to add a little bit details down here. So we are going to add two pillars of each five block height. This is, these are just stabilizing pillars to the side. 
We're gonna add three logs here for the entrance uh, because there's a little little roof going on here. And for the parsonage, I'm gonna add three logs like this, so with three blocks in the middle. Then one row with two blocks height, a cross beam here, and down here I'm gonna add one, two, one, two. So as you can see, for the parsonage, I'm starting at this second pillar here, leaving two blocks free and placing the block here. And over here, it's going on from this gap, one block free, placing it three blocks high. All right, then I wanna add two logs like this. This is also going to be a little stabilizing part. And on this side, there's also going to be a stabilization, so I'm gonna add those two logs like this, one on top of the sideway log here, and one just flying in the air like this. Happily flying. Wonderful. Now these are the frames for the tower, so let's just take concrete and fill it in. As I said, you, I'm using concrete. The reason why I'm doing that is, by the way, uh, because it is, uh, it has a nice contrast. Uh, take note that this block is going to be a little window for the parsonage. Um, you could, of course, also use uh, wool, which of course fits the style as well. But the reason why I chose to take concrete is because it is a little bit uh, it's smoother, it has a nice contrast to the rugged look of the, um, of the logs. And um, st having this building standing next to buildings that use, um, that use uh, wool for a wall material uh, makes this building uh, look cleaner. And for a church, that in the end, that is, that is the, the right thing to go for. So I'm gonna fill in everything except for these two blocks, as I said, uh, this will be the aforementioned door. And then I'm gonna fill in all of the blocks up here except for those two blocks here, which is going to be our windows. I'm gonna fill in the windows with dark oak fences. The reason why I'm not gonna take uh, regular fences for like I will do for most of the rest of the build is uh, that in the end this will have a really nice contrast to the rest of the building and therefore you can see, uh, you can clearly see uh, or, or make out uh, the windows better from the outside. I'll place them here and gonna fill in the rest of the walls. I'm not gonna randomize these parts of the walls. Um, I'm not really confident f um, that the rest of the concrete materials are really good to randomize it with but at the same time on this since this tower has a l only a little bit surface for the concrete a uh, concrete i think it's okay to have one material for this uh, so then i want to add the roofs but before that i'm going to take cobblestone walls and place them in these gaps here you could technically uh, refrain from placing them if you if you prefer it without the cobblestone walls then simply go ahead and do that I think this brings in a little bit of variation to the tower it brings in a little uh, a nice interesting shape here um, it makes it look a little bit rounder at this point uh, but it, as I said if you don't like it then just don't place it mm, okay for the roofs first of all the entrance roof we're gonna start at this corner store corner block here and place one stair another stair in front of it and then we're gonna use this pillar down here and kind of kind of for a turning point so that we're gonna make corner stairs so once again uh, two stairs like this and then turn the whole thing around zigzag your way around there and finish it off kind of as a uh, it's, it's a really uh, simple build uh, a really simple roof here then take slabs and place them as top slabs down here so that it doesn't look too bad from the bottom here you could even take um, replace those with uh, stairs at the bottom like here so that you can't see this half a block down there there we go and then I'm gonna place those slabs as well and for these parts, I'm gonna take spruce wood stairs and place one here so that it kind of connects to the whole thing. Spruce wood because it's the most uh, resembling uh, color to the regular logs here. So all those. And as you can see, this block, th this stair has to be 
one block higher than this wall. So if, if this is what it looks like for you, then up until this point, you did everything correctly. Now for the parsonage roof, first of all, I want to take spruce, um, I want to take oak wood stay, uh, blah, 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 planks, place a row of them here, and place a t um, upside down stair like this, take slabs and place them like this. Then I want to take one plank and place it right in here in the middle with two stairs to the outside. And then two slabs here, two slabs there, one top slab on each of those sides and three uh, slabs in the middle. I know this looks kind of weird, but trust me in the end, it will fit into the rest of the building just fine. For the moment, we're just gonna leave it like this. Wonderful, on the way up, I'm gonna place a few buttons in front of those overhanging logs. Oh, I forgot it on this side. I'm terribly sorry. Whoops. It's correct not to place it on this side. I, d I just told you if, if it looks like this, then you did everything right. But I, did, I didn't do anything, uh, everything uh, right myself. So uh, that makes me kind of a hypocrite, doesn't it? Right, so almost looking like a tower. Let's finish off the roof. For that, I'm gonna take, for the first row, stairs. And this is this is going to be the, the simplest part of this whole building. I'm just gonna take stairs and place it, place them all around here. So simple, so simple that I even misplace a block. It's on an, and another block. It's, it's so simple, it's so simple, you guys. All right, then I'm gonna take planks for these upper parts, and what you wanna do is to place one plank here, two in the middle, one there, and then go two stairs, two stairs, sideways stair, uh, corner stair, regular stair, corner stair, like this. So once again, plank, two planks, plank, two stairs, two stairs, corner stair, regular stair, corner stair. Wonderful. Once again, plank, two planks, plank, two stairs, two stairs, corner stair, stair, corner stair. Wonderful. And then I'm gonna take planks again, two in these corners, one up here. So two in these corners, one here, and then place the stairs sideways like this with a regular stair on top of it. There we go. So regular on top, sideways on the sides. And there we go. You might as well take another um, another colored roof material. So if you want to take another colored, uh, uh, other colored uh, logs, um, planks is of course what I mean, or uh, even stone, uh, go right ahead. For my style it fits best and I think, in my opinion, for the uh, contrasts of the colors, um, it looks best with oak wood for this building. And then, as you can see, four logs with four stairs and one log on top. And that's it. And as you can see, on this side, I think it's, it's uh, visible, visible the best, um, because these uh, fences are uh, the dark oak fences, um, the they, they are m much more darker than the rest and therefore it kind of creates this dark spot at the tower um, which kind of jumps into your eye right now the last thing for the tower or the last things for the tower first of all I want to take uh, spruce wood fences as I said most of the things will be made out of other types of fences so I'm gonna add four spruce wood fences up here and then have two random blocks down here and add spruce wood fence gates like this without destroying everything else so that we have the cross on top of it. Wonderful. And the last thing, I'm gonna take cobblestone walls and place them on top of those logs here. Once again, this is one one variation that you could do. If you don't like the looks of it, then don't place them there. For my style and my city, it fits very well, I think. So if you don't want to place them, just don't do it. 
don't don't do everything people tell you oops I forgot to place those rows here terribly sorry right so this is our tower let's move on to the nave now first of all for that one once again as always we're gonna build build uh, the frames so starting at this inner pillar from the tower I'm gonna take uh, planks uh, logs and also make a pillar of six blocks height then a double pillar on this side with by leaving one block free here and then this inner block of the double pillar will be seven blocks high instead of six then you want to place one sideway log here I'm gonna repeat the same thing here so six blocks high here a double pillar with one block in between and oh my god didn't I tell you this one slab here will be surrounded by other blocks so in the end this roof worked out perfectly this inner block will be seven blocks high again then we're gonna place another sideway lock here and we're gonna create another sideway row here and then we're gonna leave five blocks free there we go one two three four five place another pillar here once again six blocks high you guessed it with a three blocks high pillar in front of it we're gonna do the same thing here so three blocks and three more blocks with a cross beam there we go and back here once again we're gonna leave five plus three one two three four five then make a double pillar and the same thing again six blocks high and this one is seven blocks high with a cross beam six blocks high seven blocks high with a cross beam. Now we're gonna go over to the apsis and for the apsis you want to place another pillar of six blocks height here. There we go with a sideway log and then another or two more pillars of six blocks height with one sideway log to this inner pillar and two regular logs to the outside like this. So one here, one there. Wonderful. That's our frame so far. And now we can prepare the roof. So for the gable, I'm just gonna stair away my way up here. And the last block in the middle of the west tower is going to be a sideway log. And the same thing from this side, of course. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna start with this seven block high pillar here. Starting with that, we're gonna stay away our way up here. And the last block is going to be a sideway log. And once again. Very, very simple. Right. Now on the inside, I wanna add another cross beam all the way across the nave here and the same thing on this side. Right. Now for a little bit of decoration, you could technically finish the roof now, but it would look very, very simple. It would be the historically accurate roof, but it wouldn't be the very diverse and very varied roof. So what I wanna do is first of all, to add small uh, gables in the middle. For that I'm gonna start at this row where we placed these middle pillars. I'm gonna start with one log here, leave one block free to each side and place two logs on each side and simply finish this off like this. Do the same thing on the other side, so one log, one block free, two blocks, one block free, two blocks and then staircase our way up here. This is the first thing and then the second thing is going to be a kind of curved shape, shape in the roof. So for that, what I wanna do is to start at the second sideway log over here and place one log here and one log behind it. And then go up one block in diagonal towards the tower and then one block up like this. Then repeat that, one block up diagonally to the tower 
one block up and one block up diagonally to the tower. Repeat the same thing here, so I'm just going to mirror that. On the second sideway log we're going to start with two logs, one diagonally up and towards the tower, up, up and diagonally to the tower, up, and up and diagonally to the tower. We're going to repeat the same thing on this side, only once again mirrored. So we're going to start on this sideway log, the second from the end, two logs, one, and this time, of course, diagonally to this side, up, diagonal to this side, up, and diagonal to this side. On this side here, second log from the end, two logs, diagonally to the outside, up, diagonally to the outside, up, diagonally to the outside. That's it. Wonderful. Now we can start in by filling in the rest of the walls, but in the gables what you want to do is to take three um, logs and place them here, and up here you want to place two of them on each side like this. Wonderful. So, wait, uh, before I forget it, take, take one spruce wood stair, place it here and here. Once again, our stabilizations. And yeah, before we start with the roof, let's, let's fill in the walls. So, on the inside, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here, right in the, at the tower, because this, this is a, a section that I forbid you to place anything. And the reason for that is because now I want to place something. And I'm going to take cobblestone for the walls and place them make a little frame here and then I'm gonna need cobblestone uh, stairs there we go and place two of them here so this is our entrance now of course as you can see this is the inner block of the tower so this is not the the row that we placed here for the nave the reason for that is because I think it looks a little bit more uh, dimensional when you stand in here in the nave and this is the the place where you will spend most of the time so it's I, th I think it's more important to have this place be nice than to have the tower being nice uh, the, the inside of the tower of course so I'm gonna take cobblestone and fill in the rest of the walls later on I'm gonna randomize this so I'm gonna mix in andesite if I pronounce that correctly and s smooth stone um, but for the time being, it will be, be some. Um, it will simply be simpler to place only cobblestone. And the way you do it is, the bottom three rows are all going to be filled up with cobblestone, and then the outside columns, fill up two of them, and the inside column like this, so that we have two windows like this. And then the block right beneath the window is going to be replaced by a, an upside-down cobblestone wall. And the same thing here, so the, the three rows at the bottom, outside columns, inside column, and whoops, replace these ones beneath the windows with an upside down cobblestone wall. Back here I want to fill in this row and this row. And then these three here, so as you can see, diagonally to the outside from this log. And then from the top, once you have it leveled with these logs here, you go one block deeper, get rid of this block, this block, get rid of this block, and that's the uh, that's the end of the abscess. Then you want to place one log here, uh, one cobblestone block here, and two here. Take cobblestone stairs, and now I'm going to place one stair here, one upside down stair here. Face this direction. Place one stair here and one stair like this. This is our um, our abscess shape. On this side, once again, we're going to take cobblestone and place them like this. Then we have two here, one here, one stair, one stair, one stair, one stair. Wonderful. And then the rest is going to be filled in by cobblestone all the way like this. As I said, I'm just going to do it really quickly. I guess by now everybody <laughs> understands what what I mean by this. There we go, there we go, there we go. And Dunzo. Wonderful. 
Now we can fill in the gables as well, so what we want to do is to fill in these parts here, these parts here, except for this door. And what you also want to do is to re to place them in these, in this bottom row here, on this overhanging log. So, this will, one, first of all, it, it makes things look nicer from the inside, and second, secondly, um, it makes the placing the roof a little bit easier. So, like this, there we go. And over on this side, I'm only gonna place one cobblestone block on all of those, and then one down here, and the rest is going to be cobblestone stairs, simply because um, I'm not gonna continue building this further downwards. There's going, in, in the finished version, there's going to be an archway here, and it looks nicer if there's, um, if the the um, cobblestone uh, stairs are at the bottom instead of a full block. And up here, this is going to be another window. Wonderful. Now we can head over to the roof. For that, first of all, I want to take, of course, uh, our roof material and place one stair here, one stair there, and then three stairs in this row, three stairs in this row, and three stairs in this row one stair here, so in this case we have this diagonal line going towards the tower here. I want to place one here in the middle and one at the end. And I'm gonna do the same thing just on the other side, so I'm gonna place one block up here, two up here, two here, then a row of three locks, uh, three stairs, a row of three stairs, and another row of three stairs, once again this diagonal line, this time to the outside. And now what I want to do is, first of all, I want to have planks in my inventory. I want to place a plank next to this log here, to both sides, and now I'm going to make a little pattern for this wall, uh, for the wall section. So for that, I will place two stairs placed upside down, then take slabs, place two top slabs, and one regular here, so that it will end up looking like this. Same thing here, two upside down, top slab, top slab, slab. Wonderful. Now for this mini gable over here, what I want to do is to have once again an overhanging stair of one here. And then I'm gonna turn this into a corner stair so that the only this outer log is showing. So there we go. Then repeat this until you are at the highest point of the gable, like this, so corner stairs all the way. Same thing on this side. And of course over here. And now back here what I want to do is to take logs and place two of them like this. Once again breaking up the roof a little bit, bringing in a little bit more variation and kind of centering the whole look of the of the gable here. Then I want to take slabs, place three of them like this, and then the, my regular roof ending, one stair, one upside down stair, like this. And then it's one log, uh, one stair, another stair here, and one slab over here. All right, to finish off the roof in the rest of the parts, we can simply take the stairs and continue building it once all across here. That'll do it. Wonderful. And now that's almost it. I'm gonna take cobblestone walls and once again can't stress it enough. If you don't like this part then don't place the cobblestone walls. For me, for my style it fits so I'm gonna do it. And there we go. This is basically our roof. I'm gonna repeat the same thing on this side a little, uh, in a second, but first of all I wanna close off the uh, abscess roof. And abscesses, if that is the correct plural, uh, it had often had a, a kind of curved roof, so a little bit like a dome shape. So for that what I wanna do is to start at this outer block here, um, having an overhang of one block with a stair. Then I want to take a slab to the outside, place 
two planks here, one plank there, and one plank here on top of an upside down spruce stair. Repeat the same thing here, so a stair, a, plank, a, a slab, two planks, one plank. Then to the outside of this plank, there's going to be two stairs. To the back of it, there's going to be one stair here and two corner stairs here. On top of this plank here, it's one stair. There you go. And then it's slabs here and there, overhanging. One in the middle here, one in the middle there. Here a plank, there a plank, everywhere a plank, and then four slabs to end it. So this is kind of kind of a, a curved shape, a kind of mini dome, which is fitting for an abscess. And now the last part, same thing for the roof on this side again. So there we go. Two single stairs, a row of three, a row of three, another row of three, and a single one down here again, diagonal line towards the tower. On this side, one here, three here, three here, three. This time it's two, overhanging one block, and one up here. One in the middle, plank next to the logs, and then it's upside down, upside down, top slab, top slab, regular slab. So, slap, top slap, top slap, upside down, upside down. There we go. Then we can place the stairs here, the slab, and then end off, finish off the, the mini gable over here. There we go. Continue all these rows once again up until you turn all of these into corner stairs here There we go, and this is the position then again to add one log and another log in the middle Also makes it easier to uh, place a few logs here, uh, a few stairs here There we go, and the rest of it will be filled in And again, three slabs, stair, upside down stair for the roof ending. Last row over here. Cobblestone walls on top of these logs. And there we go. That's almost it. Now let's finish the roof. There is one row missing here and what we're gonna do is to place one slab on top of this side way log here, then one plank in front of it, and then a row of top slabs all the way across to the other side. Gonna do the same thing here, one slab on top of the side way log with a plank on in front of it, in the middle place a plank, and then I'm gonna take oak fences and place them in the middle here. And over here, the regular roof ending, stair, upside down stair. And that's the roof. So the only things lef left now are to use uh, any kind of glass, really. Um, one hint, once again, in uh, relation to, the, to my last video, which was about medieval houses, medieval townhouses. In that video, I told you that um, medieval houses used green and brown glass up until the, around the 14th century and this is also something that you could take into regard for um, for churches so you could fill in um, the, uh, the different kinds of glasses uh, I don't like the looks of green and brown glass in, uh, in default uh, I know in, in some texture packs or resource packs it looks kind of nice um, I know personally that on our server resource pack Loroth it looks freaking amazing and uh, therefore if you are building with a resource pack and you have nice greenish or brownish glass 
and you want to be kind of historically accurate, then throw in a little bit of green or brown glass. Also, um, it's um, not too bad to have this white stained glass um, because I, I wouldn't take the completely transparent glass since that's really a modern thing. Back in the day, even the white glass was more white than transparent, which is why it's called white, white glass. Okay. Well, of course, now... Oh, sorry. The, the parsonage, of course, needs a window too. Otherwise, the priest will be a little bit freezing here. I'm gonna place one cobblestone block here. You, you could also take a concrete block and place it here. But me personally, I, I prefer going with a cobblestone stair. Um, because I like the, the transition from a stair to a door better. Um, I'm gonna place it like this and have a door here. There we go. Wonderful. And now to the inside. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like now and ah, lighting box great and the thing is you know me probably I hate interiors so I'm not gonna build any interior here I'm gonna show you what I did and I'm very positive that you will be able to come up with something much much better I'm just gonna tell you, uh, show you what what my intentions were for this building. I forgot a block here. How sloppy! Um, so as you can see, this is now the uh, the main hall. So this is the nave. Um, lots of space in here. Yeah, and I'm gonna simply show you what I did to the uh, building in my town. So we're gonna we're gonna head over there. And there we are in my city. So, as you can see, this is the church we just built. Of course, now with randomized walls, as you can see. And just let's head in and see what I did here. So, a simple entrance area. We can go upstairs here to get into the West Tower. We can go up here and look into um, the, the nave itself. Mm. Over here, the parsonage, I mean, it can't be decorated too much, but uh, there's the pastor in his little bed. You can look outside. And, well, in the nave itself, it's very simply decorated. So, as you can see, it's just simple benches with an altar. The only thing qu which, which I would like to point out are the uh, stabilizing um, this, these, these stabilizing arches here? Um, I would advise you to add those, but aside from that and this little balcony here, it's nothing too special. I wouldn't add too much because those the, the churches back in the days uh, weren't too um, too well equipped. Um, but in the end, at, at least I mean, in a, in a small town, they wouldn't have been. Uh, a bigger church, of course, it would, would have been very magnificent and uh, richly equipped. But this one, not so much, not, not so likely. So yeah, uh, I bet you can come up with way, way better interiors than I can. So if, if you have a nice idea of what you could do in here, then um, may, maybe make a screenshot and send it my way, for example, um, by, uh, by sending it to my Facebook fan page. Um, but aside from that, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Next tutorial, I will try to make another church design. I know, oh god, another. I didn't, I, I, I didn't make um, a church for five years and now there's gonna be two of them. The reason for that is the next one I'm trying to make a design for an, a British church. So, a more stone church. Um, and less less of this this kind of um, thing that fits my style better, but more of um, a, a church that wouldn't look too good in my city, but probably in other cities. So yeah, look forward to that. And well, with that, there's nothing left to say for me about Aftermath 64. And as always, please rate, comment, subscribe, join the crew, become a major daily. We'll hopefully see you next time. Bye bye. That was a terrible outro. I'm st I'm still trying to to get back into the game. So yeah. 
have patience with me. See ya.